This is a Wool Observatory podcast. Hello and welcome to Star Stuff. This is a part two episode. As always, I am still Cody Half Moon and this is still <laughs> Haley Osborne. Yes. <laughs> um, but yes, this is part two of Theories of the Universe. So if you haven't seen part one, like so scroll up, I guess, and mm -hmm. listen to that one. Yeah. Um, so there are more theories. Yes. We covered string, mm -hmm. super string, and brain. Brain world. world. Brain world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm afraid to ask, what do you have in store? Um, so we touched on the multiverse theory. We're going to talk about it in depth. And the other one, I'm going to wait until we get to it. Uh oh, <laughs> that's a great sign. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, with the multiverse theory, um, a lot of what I talk about with multiverse theory is comparing it to like how it's portrayed in media mm -hmm. because especially nowadays with like the Spider-Man movies and stuff, a lot of it is multiverse, which I think is really, really cool. Okay. Um, and so um, I'll go over like the definition of it and everything. Um, and then we'll kind of like compare and mm -hmm. uh, talk a bit about, you know, like uh, – how it's portrayed in media and yeah. what's cool. And we can finally talk about Supernatural. We can talk about Supernatural. Yay. She's been waiting. I have been trying to sneak this in. <laughs> Yay. <Yes. Okay. laughs> All right. So um, multiverse theory suggests that our universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies and almost countless stars spanning tens of billions of light years, may not be the only one. Instead, there may be in an entirely different universe, distantly separated from ours and another and another. Indeed, there may be infinity of universes, all with their own laws of physics, their own collections of stars and galaxies, if stars and galaxies can exist in those universes, <laughs> and maybe even their own intelligent civilizations. So that's kind of like the intro to multiverse theory. <sighs> More. Yeah, more, infinite. more universes. Infinite does not make sense to me. Yeah. Infinity is a concept that, like, the human brain just literally can't understand. No, you can't know? understand it. Um, But, like, I don't know, uh, just infinite. I mean, it, like, all, all the universes, forever. There's a universe where you and I are doing this exact podcast. Everything is set up exactly the same except I'm wearing your outfit and you're wearing mine. Mm -hmm. And we're know? talking about... And we're talking about the same thing. Like, right? everything else is the same, you know? Just our outfits. So um, that would be, like, infinity universes, right? There's infinite possibilities. We could be sitting here, the two of us, and um, instead of Nate behind the camera, it's Maddie or something, you know? Like, it could be <laughs> a lot of things, um, which I think is really cool. And uh, humanity's ideas about this are ancient and varied right like they like people have been talking about multiverses since like forever well it's inspiring because it's like hey i had a really bad day today but in another universe i'm like really rich right or, like on a poolside somewhere yeah i'm like best friends with i don't know alan stern yeah. <laughs> or yeah. something I, um yeah but it uh there's actually like record of it you know like in 1848 edgar Allan poe wrote a prose poem in which he fancied the existence of a limitless succession of universes so um it's been talked about for a long time but the concept really took off when modern scientific theories attempted to explain the properties of our universe uh predicting the existence of other universes where events take uh, place outside our reality. So there could be a reality where gravity is completely different from what Whee! we experience here. Uh, there could be a reality where humans live on Venus, you know, like there, uh, if there's infinite universes, there are infinite possibilities, right. right? Even the smallest, tiniest little thing could be different, right? you know? Okay. Um, That's fun. And I think that's really cool. And I have a little personal note in here. Personally, I think that if we were to find just one other universe, just one, to me, that would mean there are infinite universes because it makes more sense for hmm. there to be infinite universes than just two. Right. You know? Yeah. And we I touched like on this one or infinite. in the Black Holes episode we did. when we were talking about universe. Mm -hmm. Inside of the inside of the, the first hor horizon, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, 
And so like, I just, I feel like there is an equal probability that any universe, or like all universes. Why stop exist. it too? Exactly. Like it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And like, it, if there is like a mathematical model saying like, oh yeah, the probability is that there's three fine Mm -hmm. but like personally i just i think about this a lot actually i think about the multiverse shocked (laughs) a lot um and it just like it wouldn't make sense to me if there was just two you know and it blows my mind that math can prove or disprove or at least lead to theories of Mm -hmm. that's nuts to me it's crazy it's crazy to think about um I actually have a quote from a science journalist, uh, Tom Siegfried, whose book, uh, The Number of Heavens, investigates how concepts of the multiverse have evolved over millennia. Mm -hmm. Um, And he said, we cannot explain all the features of our universe if there's only one of them. And I thought that was a really interesting quote because it's like the idea that like you literally can't explain everything happening in one universe if there's just one universe, you know, because Hmm. like... Uh, the question becomes like, oh, if it's this, then why isn't it this, you know, or, right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just, I think about that a lot. And so I, I really enjoy the multiverse theory just because like it, it makes sense almost, mm-hmm. you know, because like, um, I think about things like, uh, Murphy's law, like anything that can go wrong will go wrong, yes. you know? Um, if that's the case, then like, if anything can happen, it will happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just, I, I genuinely, like, this is one of those theories, like, there's not a lot of theories that I, like, wholeheartedly believe in or anything. This is one of them where, like, I genuinely feel like there's got to be a multiverse just because, like, it makes the most sense. Well, yeah. I mean, like, for example, um, maybe, you know, I think it's over 10 years ago now, mm-hmm. or maybe not that long, um, Leonard Nimoy died and I never got to marry him. And so I feel like this is, like, when you're asking why not, (laughs) this is like, yeah, no, I've totally married Leonard Nimoy, just not in this. Just in a different universe. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's happened, folks. I love that. I love that. And it's it's crazy because this theory, um, there's been a lot of research into it, and there's been a lot of discussion among scientists. um, And I was trying to look up, like, what is the probability that we live in a multiverse? Like, what is the scientific probability? Mm-hmm. Everyone had different answers. Oh, fun. <laughs> there are people who said 10%, others say 50%. Some people say even more than that. And so it's like, it's crazy how different it is. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of things in the science... The fact it's not zero across the board yeah, is already mind-blowing. Exactly. Like, the the fact that, like, there aren't like specific percentages associated with it. You know, there aren't like, oh yeah, it's a 50-50 or like, oh yeah, like it, it uh, it's not possible. Or mm-hmm. like, like so many people have looked into this stuff. People mm-hmm. who spend, you know, their entire graduate career studying this come up with completely different answers. And that's like, Based on so math. So wild. Based on math. Yeah. Not Based just on math. their fancies like marrying yeah. Leonard Demoy. Yeah. This is actual <laughs> this hard is like science. actual hard science. Mm-hmm. And the... The ideas all across the board are just so different, so varied. Mm -hmm. And I find that so interesting because most science, there's like two camps or there's like three camps, you know, like, uh, like with, uh, when we were talking about light and we were talking about, oh, well, um, light behaves as a wave. No, it behaves as a particle. No, it behaves as both like three separate things. Right. But everybody fell into those categories with this. I could not find Hmm. two sources that said the same thing. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. It was crazy. It was controversial. Crazy. It's very controversial. So a lot of people have completely different ideas. Um, like some people argue that if the universe is infinite, then there has to be a multiverse. Well, right. Because, because anything. Infinite, anything, hap- anything could happen. Um, some, say it's, uh, some say it explains how the universe began and how it ends. What? Some people say that uh, being in a multiverse would explain how the universe began and how it's going to end. How? That's not. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but that research has also yielded what could be evidence of a multiverse. 
So in 2010, a team of scientists from Great Britain, Canada, and the U.S. discovered four odd, seemingly unlikely circular patterns in the cosmic microwave background. So that's that's the uh, big sphere surrounding us where, like, you know how the further out you go, the further back in time you're looking? Yes. Uh, there's a point where you can't look any further because there was, like, no time before that, right? That's the beginning of the universe. That's the cosmic microwave background. We've talked about it before. Um, and, and that's where we get the concept of a sphere because it's, like... Yeah, because it's, is... it's expanding in all directions at the same rate. Um, and so... It... Before time was... Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, everything started as a little pinprick and then it... Boop. Um, and so we've got this cosmic microwave background radiation that we can't see past. And um, they, they found these, like, unlikely circular patterns in the cosmic background. And they hypothesized that these marks were essentially bruises that our universe got from bumping into other universes. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? What? Yeah. Like little like 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 bumper cars. Bumper cars. What? You know? Like yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But what else would explain the circles? Um I didn't I didn't see anything um any like other explanations. Um that was the only one that I saw when I was looking this up, but uh the crazy thing is we can't prove that a multiverse doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. We yeah. can't prove that it doesn't exist. We can only prove that it does exist. And so it's like, I, I think that's where a lot of people are like, oh, the percentage that we live in a multiverse is relatively high because like we can't prove that we don't. It's never zero. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't see a single person say that there's a 0% chance that what? we live in a multiverse. I did not see a single paper that said we uh, 0% live in a multiverse. Sorry, my so, phone turned itself on when I dropped it earlier. I... Um, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's a lot to like wrap your brain around. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So there are so – I'm still stuck on the circle. Yeah. On the circles. Right. In – and I think of it as TV static. But yes. But the, the radioactive background. Um, How so do we it see does, that far? Um, we do – we do – the TV static is the CMB. Uh, that's, that's us hearing the CMB basically. And we picked up circles – in this mm -hmm. circular patterns yeah yeah and there's no other theory or explanation that would say that's why i don't circles. know if there is right, I, right. I didn't see one didn't when see i was looking yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. it so okay. there might be there might be other explanations but that's the one that i found because i was specifically looking into right multiverse, multiverse. um but it's crazy that like you know, nobody I, – I didn't see a single person say, oh, yeah, there we do not, like, 0%. We it's do taking not. me back to that Men in Black outro, man, with all the marbles hitting each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I also found that the universe's scale is the factor that makes the possibility of a multiverse all the more believable. So we know that the universe is really, really, really big, right? Uh, possibly even infinite in size. We don't know. But if it's infinite in size, but we know that it does end at some point because time hasn't started yet. We don't know that it ends. We only know that we can't see past that because we're looking back in time. So there is more than likely more stuff past the CMB that we just can't see because we haven't gone towards it. So the way I like to think of it is let's say that I have a giant sphere around me. You know those like... um. Like Bubble Boy? Um, no, those things that they used to give you in like middle school, the balls that like contract. Oh, they expand. expand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say that I'm inside of one of those, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the CMB. I can only see within there. Mm -hmm. Let's say that it's like blacked out or whatever. That's all I can see. But if I take a step to the left, I can see more to the left. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the idea behind the universe is like all we can see is in the sphere, right? All we can see is up till that CMB, but there is more than likely more past the CMB. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think almost everybody believes that there is more past the CMB that we just can't see because we've never left our galaxy. We've, mm -hmm. we've barely even left our solar system, right? right? Yeah. And so we, we haven't pushed past that boundary yet. We haven't seen more, but there is probably more to see. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And like so, just because I haven't personally witnessed a kangaroo doesn't mean they're not real. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so this means that we may not be able to detect everything that exists in the universe. Uh, since scientists have determined that the universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old, that means we can only detect light that's been able to reach us in that time. So that's that CMB border that I was talking the about. The idea that the Big Bang, it happened like a lot of times in different mm -hmm. places. Um, so the Big Bang, um, the idea behind the Big Bang is that everything was in a little point that exploded outwards, mm -hmm. happened once. Yeah. But it's expanding. Right. And that's for our universe, but it happened maybe in another universe. If the multiverse theory is correct, it could have. You, that universe could have started with a Big Bang or it could have started some other way. We don't we don't know, mm -hmm. you know? Or infinite. Because if there's, if there's infinite multiverses, there's infinite ways of starting that universe, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wow. So um, if a parallel reality simply was just farther away than 13.8 billion light years, there would be no way of us for knowing it was out there, even if it existed in dimensions that we are capable of perceiving. So even if that universe is exactly the same as ours with like slight differences and we were able to interact with it, if it is further than 13.8 billion light years away, we cannot see it right now. Because light can't get to it. Because our universe simply just did not uh, exist and we can't see that. We can't see past that. So that's where like the time and then also the space comes because time, our time yeah. hasn't gone that far. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Even if there's time over here, yep. our time hasn't mm -hmm. touched. Mm -hmm. Except for where maybe it has. Yeah, according to the circular patterns. Isn't that crazy? It's not not crazy, Haley. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, this next bullet point actually has to do with the uh, black hole episode that we did. Oh, yeah. Um, it actually helps with the grandfather paradox that we were talking about in that episode. Do you remember that, the grandfather paradox? Yes. 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 You can't go back and marry your grandfather. More or, or like yeah. talk to him. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, guess yeah, there yeah. are variants yeah. <laughs> of that. Um, so if the multiverse exists uh – -huh. People argue that time travelers cannot mess up the future. The presence of alternate worlds means there isn't a single timeline to mess up. So if a person went back in time and changed things, he'd simply spawn a whole new set of parallel universes. So instead of, oh, I did this thing that led to this thing already happening, it's like, no, you've changed something and now you have spawned. You're in a different universe. So the way I like to think about this, and um, there's actually – a movie that did this very, very well, Avengers Endgame. <laughs> they pull up the timeline, right? When Bruce Banner goes back, spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet, but um, they pull out the the timeline. Um, the Sorcerer Supreme uh, shows like the timeline, right? And she takes out the uh, time stone, right? And then it branches off. Ah, okay. That's what this is talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that cool? Cool, 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 yeah. cool. So that would mean like you physically could not mess up the future because you would just be in a different universe at that point. As a god <laughs> created a new universe. <laughs> Who knows? Who Time knows? travelers, be careful. Yeah. And this has been talked about since like the 12,000s, like, like the year 1,200. Oh, it's the 1,200s. I was like, what? 1,200s, yeah, not 12,000s. The twelve hundred. So I said right. that, and I was like, "That didn't sound right." It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long time that people have talked about this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's Jeez. crazy. It's crazy, right? Hmm. I have another um, quote from the journalist we were talking about earlier, Siegfried. Hmm. Why are the fundamental constants of nature the way they are? Why is there enough time in our universe to make stars and planets? Why do stars shine the way they do with just the right amount of energy? All those things are questions we don't have the answers for in our physical theories. Huh. Yeah. So um, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, my mind's like a little melting right I know. now. Okay. Like the multiverse is an insane theory. And if we prove that even just one other universe exists, then mm -hmm. the multiverse How exists. How do that though unless we interacted with it? Which it seems like we kind of can't unless it's already – commingled in our current universe because of the way that time works or if we figure out faster than light travel but then we need a tachyon <laughs> and we're back to string theory we're back to string theory <laughs> okay. um 
There's another uh, compelling type of multiverse uh, called the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. So uh, cool, this is it's a cool name. It's a pretty cool name, right? Yeah. <laughs> Kudos to whoever you know did that. <laughs> um, so it was a theory that uh, mathematically described how matter behaves, uh, proposed by physicist Hugh Everett. So Hugh Everett was the man who came up with this in 1957. Uh, the many worlds interpretation predicts the presence of branching timelines or alternate realities in which our decisions play out differently, sometimes producing wildly different outcomes. I saw um, a community episode about this nice. where they throw up a, a die to mm -hmm. see who's going to go get the pizza and then uh they show and he was like wait you're creating you know like six different yeah. realities uh -huh. and then each time it was like a different decision a different role was made so that's the many worlds uh theory or um like the movie clue how it has the separate different endings that could be looked at as an uh interpretation of this you know <laughs> yes so this this has been uh this specific type of uh multiverse <laughs> theory that. has been uh shown in a lot awesome. of different uh movies and books and stuff that's how it could have happened exactly <laughs> but like here's what really happened like the choose your own adventure uh books oh my god i was obsessed the goosebump that's, ones yeah, that's I was like obsessed the perfect, with those that's like the perfect example of this kind of thing happening mm -hmm. um except it would be you know the, the whole universe <laughs> yes 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 so yes. much larger scale but yeah you know same thing so i guess um then I guess the supernatural reference wouldn't work because I think their other like multiverses were created by their in that canon, their God created these mm -hmm. multiverses where mm -hmm. like it wasn't Dean and Cass and Sam. Yeah. It was yeah. they were their All actors. Yeah. yeah. Or our current one, which was cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it's a little um, bit different. It's, so that's a different This type is of based like on decisions. Type deals. Yeah. That we make. Yeah, but um like multiverse theory, that that is definitely a type of multiverse theory, you know, um, there, there could be, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Um, whoever it says, uh, look, there's actually an infinite number of parallel earths. And when you do an experiment and you get the probabilities, basically all that proves is you live on the earth where that was the outcome of that experiment. Oh. So like, um, that's a catch 22. There's this thing called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle where basically you can't, um, measure something's, um, uh, momentum and position at the same time. Um, and when you measure it, you change the outcome. So that is basically like the math version of this multiverse. Or like theory. if you perceive it, it changes. Isn't there some weird like chaos thing of a guy with a box who went viral on YouTube about like if you perceive it? Schrodinger's it cat. Um, yeah, and I know that like that was an argument out of certain, but it was like mm -hmm. um, that if you do the thing, it changes the experiment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I mean, you can even see that in, I know in some studies for like psychology where oh, yeah. they know they're being studied and then the results are affected because uh -huh. they're acting different, yes. even subconsciously knowing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So this happens in our everyday lives all the time, mm -hmm. um, whether it's in books or psychology or science, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. This happens all the time. And yeah. so this type of multiverse theory, I mean, it's, it checks out. It checks okay. out. Yeah. Um, but um, scientists don't think it's possible to travel between universes, at least not yet. So if bummer if there is a multiverse scientists currently think you know what uh we don't think that it's possible for us to travel between but maybe um, they can unless a whole lot of physics we know that's pretty solidly established is wrong you mm. can't travel to these uh these multiverses but they could travel to us but who knows thousands of years from now somebody might figure something out that we may have never imagined right they or might they, be able to travel to us or yeah. they've already done it in this other universe mm -hmm. and they'll yeah. Bridge the gap. Yeah, it's crazy. So like multiverse theory, I feel is very closely linked with like time travel, especially because a lot of times when people talk about multiverse theory, what they're really talking about is time travel. Um, the idea of like going back and changing things, creating a new universe, things like yeah. that, you know, uh, I feel like they're very closely intertwined. Uh -huh. um, oh my God. So in Groundhog Day, there are like 290 yeah, universes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, cool. Exactly. Okay. Um, so certain time travel stories, it like rewrites. It doesn't like create a new universe or whatever. 
Um, and that's different, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. uh, that's not talking about multiverse. That's just like true, you know, time travel. But, um, with the, the multiverse theory, um, it's, it's, pretty crazy. Doctor Who out there really making it wrecked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But um, even though certain features of the universe seem to require the existence of a multiverse, nothing has been directly observed that suggests it actually exists. So far, the evidence supporting the idea of a multiverse is purely theoretical and in some cases philosophical. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't have any hard evidence that there is a multiverse, but again, we can't prove that there's not. Right. Well, was, and this is more similar to the like black hole where we could get there, but we couldn't prove it because we can't couldn't look at it, and then we got a picture of one. Yeah. Or then we observed one versus mm-hmm. like you can't prove there's not a unicorn in this room, where it's like I mean, it depends on the type of multiverse theory you're talking about and to what extent. Mm. It could be either one of those. Oh, okay. Because if you're talking about a universe that has different laws of physics than we do, I feel like that'd be closer to like, you can't prove there's not a unicorn in this room. You know? Right, right. Um, I feel like that that's closer to that type of multiverse theory. Which you could say for literally almost anything. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so People there's People use it to defend their opinions like, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so you got there's like a point where you have to like draw the line with that kind of reasoning, but currently the idea is we can't prove it because we can't get past the CMB right now. Right. That's that's the idea behind like well we can't prove it right now. Though the circles thing is pretty solid. The for circles me. thing, yeah. They're, going back to that, but like I said, there's probably other explanations that I just didn't see mm-hmm. when I was looking into this. Um, but yeah, that's that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm convinced. Um, the final thing I have for multiverse theory um, is another Siegfried quote. Um, the universe is not constrained by what some blobs of protoplasm on a tiny little planet can figure out or test. We can say, this is not testable, therefore it can't be real. But that just means we don't know how to test it. And maybe someday we'll figure out how to test it, and maybe we won't. But the universe can do whatever it wants. Did Siegfried just call me a blob of protoplasm? protoplasm? Yes. Rude. Sir, you have never met me. You don't know me. You don't know my life. (laughs) But I I think it's a pretty cool quote because it's literally just saying, like, just because we can't prove it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Or we can't one day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Words of inspiration from Mm -hmm. one blob of protoplasm (laughs) to another. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, cool. So any any questions, any final thoughts on the multiverse theory? I mean, so many. (laughs) Um... So many. Yeah. So many. And, and I, it, it's difficult because I still can't really like fathom infinite and and that is a lot of, that's a big yeah. roadblock, roadblock. So mm-hmm. yeah. No, I get it. I get my it. brain's officially mel- melted though. If <laughs> that's so I'm like. Good. Good. Because we've got one more theory to talk about. Fantastic. Cody doesn't know. How, she hasn't seen the outline yet. I don't know. Are you ready? She won't let me see it. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, my God. (laughs) Here we go. This is the simulation theory. (laughs) Here we go. This one, this this one hurt me. This one hurt me when I was looking into it. It really, it really did. Simulation theory. The simulation theory. um, It sounds far-fetched, first off. Uh, A lot of people hear simulation theory and they think like the Matrix. Oh, my gosh. You know. But a Swedish philosopher uh, named Nick Bostrom showed in 2003 that it is more probable than one might think that we are living in a simulation. In his seminal paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? He explained that future generations might have mega computers that can run numerous and detailed simulations on their forebears. In other words, ancestor simulations, in which simulations, uh, in which simulated beings are imbued with a sort of artificial consciousness, and the odds are, we are products of that simulation. Uh-huh. Cool. Okay. So he thinks because that technology may very well one day exist, that that increases the likelihood of us just being a test of one of our spawns Mm -hmm. computer programs. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love that. 
Um, I found something about um, there was actually a uh, talk of on, or there was um, an episode of the podcast Star Talk mm, uh, yeah. with Neil deGrasse Tyson where he had a comedian, uh, Chuck Nice, on. And apparently they they talked about this. Uh, they talked about the simulation theory. And um, I'll just I'll read I'll read you the excerpt that I found um, okay. on the article of it. Um, it's not often that a comedian gives an astrophysicist goosebumps when discussing the laws of physics, but comic Chuck Nice managed to do just that in a recent episode of the podcast Star Talk. The show's host Neil deGrasse Tyson had just explained the simulation argument and the idea that we could. Ver- uh, we could be virtual beings living in a computer simulation. If so, the simulation would, be, uh, would most likely create perceptions of reality on demand rather than simulate all of reality all of the time, much like a video game optimized to only render the parts of a scene visible to a player. Maybe that's why we can't travel faster than the speed of light, because if we could, oh. we could get to another galaxy, said Nice. Oh, my God. The show's co-host uh, uh, prompting Tyson to gleefully interrupt before they can program it. The astrophysicist said, uh, delighting as uh, at the thought. So the pro- uh, programmer put in that limit. So they had a conversation about this where oh they talked God. about the speed of light and how, oh, maybe humans can't break the speed of light because the people programming us. It's their, their fail safe. They haven't, they haven't programmed other galaxies. They haven't programmed other star systems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now... A new analysis shows that the odds that we are living in a base reality, meaning an existence that is not simulated, are pretty much even. Oh, come on. It is a 50-50 chance. Shut up. According according to a lot of stuff that I read, it is a 50-50 chance that we are living in a simulation. You know what? That takes some pressure off, I guess. Yeah. Right? Really? Yeah. (laughs) So the study also demonstrates... That if humans were to ever develop the ability to simulate conscious beings, the chances would overwhelmingly tilt in favor of us, too, being virtual inside of someone else's computer. So basically, if we are able to create AI consciousness, you know, like like a full... Don't even talk about chat GPT right now because I'm already <laughs> tripping. Okay. Then we are almost 100% living in a simulation is what they concluded. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So, so the decisions that we're making now mm-hmm. are affecting our future to create this simulation, which means that we are almost solidifying our chances of being a simulation, which is the grandfather paradox? So we are currently 50-50, whether we're in a simulation or not. And if we if stop we create, trying, <laughs> if we stop trying to make AI happen, it doesn't necessarily change the probability. It just changes whether we know the true probability or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we already sort of are there with AI, right? Aren't they? Not quite. Okay. Um. No. So. Um, in 2003, uh, Bostrom imagined a technolo- uh, te- technologically adept civilization that possesses immense computing power and needs a fraction of that power to create, uh, to simulate new realities with conscious beings inside of them. Think, you know the movie Free Guy? No. Okay, so there's this movie called Free Guy. It's got Ryan Reynolds in it. It's hilarious. You should watch it. I think you'd really like it. Basically, these two people, um, they are working at a video game place. Um, There's this video game that comes out, and um, they had worked on code for uh, their own video game. Basically, it was just like – it was kind of along the lines of like Animal Crossing where it's like everyday life, um, really pretty like scenery, stuff like that. Um, And the guy like – steals their thing and puts it into his game. His game is basically like Grand Theft Auto, like crazy, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And one of the NPCs gains consciousness and starts playing the game like a player. (laughs) Oops. If that were to happen, we live in a simulation. That is what this argument is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And so – Theoretically, or I guess like mm-hmm. philosophically, mm-hmm. I am curious what that would do 
to like if that were like, hey, this is like for real, this is probably a simulation. Mm -hmm. What would that change in our day-to-day -day life? Like, we couldn't do anything about that. It's not like the programmer is going to be like, oh, crap, they found out, and turn the program off, right? Who knows? <laughs> Restart? Maybe they'll reboot. Maybe uh, they'll see where we go from there. Maybe they Rioting give us the free streets? will. Do we have free will in this simulation? Did he code us any free will? Or is this like the Sims where like if you ignore them, they die because they can't get out of the swimming pool? Right. Or is it like, yeah, just go do your own little thing? I used to play the Who Sims. Knows? Sims 2 was mm -hmm. my thing. Like, No, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, I actually so if one of my Sims gains sentience, then I know sentience, then I know that I'm also a Sim. More than likely. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I actually put something in here about the matrix because you can't talk about simulation theory without talking about the matrix. Neo was the first thing I thought of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, it, it popularized the notion of simulated realities and, um, the idea actually has deep roots in Western and Eastern philosophical traditions, uh, from Plato's cave allegory uh, to uh, oh, Zhuang yeah. Zhu's uh, butterfly dream. Yeah, yeah. More recently, Elon Musk gave fuel or, uh, further fuel to the concept that our reality is a simulation by saying the odds that we are in a base reality is one in billions. Mm -hmm. He said that. Did he? Yeah. I mean... And then people were agreeing with him. Uh, David Kipling of Columbia University uh, said, Musk is right. If you assume uh, propositions one and two of the trilemma are false, um, how, can you, how can you assume that, you know? I mean, I guess if Elon Musk is a simulation, that's – things make more sense. Okay. <laughs> so – but yeah, so this is this is like a further explanation. Lord. Um, so these probably probabilities would change dramatically if humans ever created a simulation with conscious beings mm -hmm. inside of it, uh, because such an event would change the chances that we had previously assigned to the physical hypothesis. So we had uh, assigned probabilities to the hypothesis based off of what we ex uh, experience now. But if we were to create conscious beings inside of a simulation, changes completely. Um, the day that we invent that technology, it flips the odds, uh, from a little better, uh, than 50, 50 that we are like real to almost certainly we are not real. Um, Thanks, according to Kipling. these calculations, it'd be a very strange celebration of our genius on that day because like, oh my gosh, we created this, but Yay. oh no, like, we're that not means. real. Nothing yeah. matters. And I literally put in here like, so if the events in the movie Free Guy were to happen, we're almost certainly in a simulation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Nate's doing his little dancey dance. So yes. we got. <laughs> I'm sitting down. <laughs> um, it's okay. We only got we only got two more points to touch on. So we're gonna touch on those real quick. Um, so there is an expert on computational mathematics at the California Institute of Technology, uh, Dr. Wadi, who has thought about the question: um, If the simulation has infinite computing power, there is no way you're going to see that you're living in a virtual reality because it can compute whatever you want to the degree of realism that you want. He says, um, if this thing can be detected, you have to start from the principle that it has limited computational resources. Thinking again in video games. Um, many of which re, uh, rely on clever programming to minimize the computation required to construct a virtual reality. Buffering. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Kipling, dis uh, despite his own study, worries that further work on simulation hypothesis is on thin ice. It's arguably not testable as to whether we live in a simulation or not, he says. If it's not fals falsifiable, then how can you claim it's really science? Hmm. So he's saying, well, if if we can't test whether we're in a simulation or not is that actually science that we're working on at that point i mean if you're talking about like probability probability is still science probability is still science but a lot of the stuff in the probability calculation has to be inferred based off of just like which makes it a theory of the universe mm -hmm. so exactly I mean, there you go theory of the universe and i honestly am sitting here and i can't decide if i would be relieved to be a simulation or upset. Right. Because I'm also stubborn. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah. like, man, that might be nice. I mean, like, honestly, what what could we do? What would change? What would change? I still have rent to pay. Right. 
even if it's simulated. I mean, money's simulated anyway. Let's not go down that path. But, <laughs> but yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the simulation theory. Basically, currently we are sitting at a 50-50 chance, but as soon as we What would that do to people who have religions? Because I was even thinking about that mm-hmm. perception. I've actually, um, so I know we don't, typically get very uh, into religion on this podcast. I'm personally not super religious, but I do have a lot of friends who are. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had conversations with them about stuff uh, like this. Um, Specifically, one conversation comes to mind. Um, I was talking to uh, one of my friends who grew up uh, Christian. Mm. And we were talking about um, things like the Big Bang or the simulation theory, things like that. And um, like his stance on it, and this is obviously not speaking for all religions or even all Christians or right, anything right, like right. that. Um, this is just some a conversation that I had with one of my friends. Um, his stance would be like, okay, well, if we are in a simulation, then who's to say that the programmer is not God? Right, you yeah, know, it would just stuff be like a that. different interpretation. Exactly. So it's like these things can definitely uh, coexist. Yeah. But um, I, I don't typically talk about it in that sense because I'm – I'm not super religious, but that's something that I've talked to uh, a few of my religious friends about. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I think the world would be chaos after that. It'd be quite interesting to see. It'd be very interesting. What so. would happen? But I also we'll like to muse about zombies and aliens and what would change. Zombies just, terrify me. I know. Um, just a, I'm so scared of zombies. Add another thing to my <laughs> list of things to think about at two o'clock in the morning. Are we in a simulation? What do you guys think? Um, <laughs> if you uh, if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, if there's anything you want to argue with us about, uh, go ahead and check out our Discord channel Look or the comments. Mm-hmm. Um, join our Discord channel for behind the scenes content. Um, we can have a discussion on whether you think we live in a simulation or not. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Um, feel free to use the uh, hashtag, hashtag ask star stuff to ask any questions you guys might have about life, the universe, and everything. Thank you so much for listening to this crazy episode. It was really fun to put together. Potentially real, or maybe not. Potentially real, maybe not. Who knows? 50 50 Ooh. chance. Um, anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. This podcast was made possible by our members and donors. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our nonprofit in making more digital education like this available, go to lowell.edu slash donate. Thanks for listening.